Hello, and welcome to Karma Talks, our monthly video podcast dedicated to yoga studio owners sharing their stories and best practices. My name is Yulia Alenikova, and I'm a marketing director of KarmaSoft, a yoga software company. And I have a guest today, very special guest again. Very special. Yep. Her name is Tori Jarvis Grant. She is the owner and creator of On The Mat Yoga Studio in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Welcome, Tori, and welcome, everyone. Thank you, Julia. Happy to be here. Yes, it's my pleasure. So how is, how is Nova Scotia doing? <laughs> oh, we're okay. We, we actually, we just got a, we were going to get a hurricane on Wednesday, but it only arrived as a, as a tropical storm. So um, wow, we're good. Oh, hurricane. Yeah, we get a lot of hurricanes. You know, we're sort of out of an archipelago, sort of in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. So we get a lot of hurricanes actually uh-huh. during the season. Um, but we're good. We're safe. Didn't hit. It wasn't that bad. Uh, it's beautiful today, uh, like 24 and sunny. So it's a lovely fall day here in Nova Scotia. Wow, how awesome. I'm in Whistler yeah. on the other side of Canada and it's it's raining so bad. I'm scared really? to go outside. I'm just scared. Oh. It's so dark, gloomy, miserable. And it's like, it's a moon soon and it's, and it's so cold. <laughs> so I'm, <laughs> I feel a little bit bad holding you at home right now for this talk because, because for me, it's great to be home. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm not missing anything outside. Definitely not. <laughs> I but think Whistler you, is so beautiful where you are, regardless of the rain. It it's gorgeous. I think that we yeah. are on, in the two most beautiful places in Canada. We bookend the entire country. I'm on <laughs> one end, you are on the other end. It's just the two prettiest places in all of like the world where we are. Yes, that's true. So you've it's been true. here. Sounds like you've yes, been I here. Have. I Good. have. Good. Okay, yeah. I can tell right away. Mm-hmm. Okay, so today we are going to talk about sense of belonging in a yoga studio. And mm-hmm. lately it's been more like uh, physical lo- location versus virtual studio. So yeah. we're going to explore this topic with Tori. Please share your insights with us. And I have a few questions for you. But if you want to share some stories, you're welcome to do that too. Okay. 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 Uh, well, let's just begin by talking about your studio on the mat. What a great mm. name. <laughs> <laughs> so, and you mentioned that it's rather an old fashioned studio. And I, I'm curious what you mean, what you meant by that. Sure. Um, when I said it was, it was old fashioned, I meant, because you, you had asked, I, you know, we, we had some, we had some back and forth, obviously, before, before this interview and asked if there was a, a niche at my studio and I was like, not really. We're sort of boring. We're sort of old fashioned. We just do yoga. Um, because, you know, I, I had, I've been practicing for a very long time and I had been teaching before I started on the mat. And, um, you know, in, I, you know, definitely in this millennia, you know, in the 2000s, since yoga has become popular in North America, it's gone through several iterations. You know, like Madonna brought it to North America with Ashtanga yoga that was a really big deal and then hot yoga became a really big deal and then sort of like hip-hop yoga um you know now there's like beer and goat yoga all of this kind of weird yoga stuff and i had previously practiced and taught at a baptiste inspired studio are you familiar with baron baptiste no i don't think so but sounds interesting it's it's a very powerful it's a very powerful flowing asana practice Uh um and there's a you know there's a lot of philosophy around it a lot of good philosophy around it a lot of it i bought into for many years Uh, and i still buy into aspects of it but you know it was very much about um sort of reaching for the next you know always having a goal um you know sort of, you know, like a professional goal, a goal in your yoga practice. Um, you know, there was a 40 days to personal revolution uh, program that was always being run at this studio. And I think it was just a function of where I was sort of in my life. I, in my professional life, you know, I had a professional life before yoga became my full-time job. Mm-hmm. It was a side hustle for me. Um, and I also had, when I started on the mat, I had a two and a three-year-old. So it was just okay. really, really busy. 
And when I started on the mat, I was like, you know, what would be so novel if I didn't have to do any of this bullshit anymore? <laughs> if I could just have a space where people didn't have to have a goal and it didn't have to be about you know, getting to the most difficult, elaborate, beautiful peak pose. You know, if people could just come in and be comfortable being sad and being scared and being with their grief. Mm -hmm. And it didn't have to be about anything flashy or big or what was next. It could just be about what was today. And I thought the best way to deliver that would be if it was just yoga, you know, yes. just a vinyasa flow or a yin flow or a yin yasa or a restorative yoga. But it was really just about the yoga. Yes. As opposed to, you know, anything, I don't, you know, and I don't want to say gimmicky because, you know, a lot of that stuff is you know, it hooks people. It really hooks people into the practice of yoga. It gets people interested and excited about it. And that's a really good thing. And then sort of what comes after that, you know, when it loses its shine a little bit, you know, when you're tired of hip hop yoga, what's next? Definitely. Because yoga mm -hmm. is so much more than the asana. And I wanted a place where people would be comfortable exploring the power of their yoga outside of the poses. So you know, it is an old fashioned studio and that we just do yoga. Um, but I also think that's what makes it very special. Yes. Yeah. I, I like, I, I feel like I'm, I'm more of an old fashioned person. <laughs> so, <laughs> so for me, I feel like I would definitely go check your studio out because I, I, I'm, I'm more, I'm not into beer and what go, beer and gold this, that sounds like a wild mixture anyway but i, <laughs> I don't I, i'm not familiar with all these um funky kind of new styles and yeah I, I guess i'm more of an old-fashioned too that's why what you're saying resonates with me and especially i do like how you said comfortable being sad yeah i think that it's it just hit something in me i thought oh wow that's that's she, she put it nicely so thanks for sharing it oh thank you yeah i i think that um the yoga world we really have um you know marketed the poop out of you know good vibes only and you know like yes. inhale mm -hmm. the good shit exhale the bullshit you know and um i think that's all bullshit i you know i mm -hmm. we there there should be no shame associated with who we actually are because, you know, uh, I, I try to be a good person and a, and a positive person, but there are days that you wake up and that, that are just not great. Exactly. You know, we're all experiencing our lives and our lives are not great every day. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and there's some really important um, transformational stuff that happens to us along the way. Life is not linear. Life is sort of like a series of this. Yep. And sometimes it's a series of this and you're down there for a <laughs> while and that's okay. I wanted to create a space where it was okay to be down here for a while and to walk through the doors and with no expectations, just welcome, welcome. Not how are you? Welcome. It's nice to see you. Do some yoga. Excellent. I love yeah. it. What you described as down wave sounds like the 2020. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, is it ever? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I guess it's, it's very important to have this support right now since we're still in 2020. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. We've had a hard time. I mean, it's been such a transformational year. You know, we're still in the trauma of it. So it'll be yep. interesting to yes, see what yeah. happens post-trauma, you know, whether we grow from it. And I'm sure there will be, I'm, I'm hopeful that there will be some growth globally, you know, not just in our community, but globally from it. Um, and then on an individual basis too, you know, what we choose to do with all of our learnings from this past year. Um, it'll be really interesting to see what happens in 2021, you know, when we say goodbye to 2020. Yes, yes. Um, I look forward to it. <laughs> yeah, me too. But I also, I also found that 2020 had a lot of blessings in disguise. What first seemed like a disaster 
over time turned out to be an opportunity or an insight or a discovery. So I'm, yeah, it's intense, but we are gonna get there. We we're all doing our homework, and uh, and that's why I decided to open up this theme of sense of belonging, because mm. where do we really belong? We kind of redefine the patterns where we are, and mm. that's why as a yoga studio physical space. I don't think people would be coming there and make it a regular practice if they didn't belong there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, would... I, I agree with you. Uh -huh. um, and, and, that, and that's, you know, during, during the lockdown, um, to give you some context of what's happening where we are in Nova Scotia, we were, the government shut down yoga studios on March 17th. And then we were able to reopen on June 5th. So, you know, for a good three months. Wow, um, that's a long time. It was a long time. It was a <laughs> long time. And uh, we, as a studio, um, decided for as long as we could, and we were able to, but, you know, I didn't say, there were no absolutes when we started out because we weren't sure how long this was going to go on. You know, that, I think that was the hardest part of it. And, and mm -hmm. it still is the hardest part. We don't know how long this is going to go on. And there's still so many unknowns. Yes. Um, but we said that we were not going to monetize the pandemic for as long as we could. So, um, we were going to deliver free content, um, in the form of two to three classes, uh, a week. They're just 30 minute classes. 20, 30, sometimes 35 or 40 minute classes. All of our teachers participated um, and we just delivered them on social media. And it was from places like this. I'm, I told you I'm in the basement, my basement. Yes. Uh, so I'd come down to the basement. I would record a class. You know, people did it uh, in their attics. People did it with their kids. Um, people did it getting ready for runs. Um, people did it. Their dogs interrupted. Their kids interrupted. Their partners interrupted. <laughs> power outages interrupted. Um, but it gave uh, our students an insight. I think more of an insight into who we were on a personal level, mm -hmm. um, okay. as opposed to you know when we're at the studio. Um, and that and that's a personal level too. I mean, they're they're just two very different personal experiences. But what we heard from our students is that they still felt very connected to who we were as human beings, um, which was lovely. And uh, luckily, you know, three months was only three months. And we were opened up again on June 5th in person. Um, and we've kept our focus on our in-studio classes since we opened. So although uh, KarmaSoft and Rudy from KarmaSoft, who's the president of KarmaSoft, um, mm -hmm. He helped me set up the back end of our software so that we are able to go virtually right away with the literally a click of a button. If we are shut down again Great. by the government, we decided to focus our energy with the in-studio classes when we first opened or reopened. Okay, I see. So for three months, you've just been offering online free classes and yes. ever since july 5th you're only offering in class in in-person classes yes correct correct okay i see that that's that's interesting because i know a lot of yoga studio they're still offering a lot of online classes yes yeah and it was a really difficult choice and it was something we were going to do both when we first opened um and but it was such a different time, even than it is now, even though it's only three months later. So it was three months in, and now we're three months out of when we first opened. Um, but the care and attention to detail that it required to reopen and do in-person classes, mm -hmm. I didn't feel that we could give that personal attention to in-person classes and do it virtually as well. You know, okay. from a logistics standpoint, to have our, you know, first of all, we are, our capacity is, is it's, de it's been decimated. You know, the amount of students that we can fit into, a, into a, our, our studio now, because they have to be physically distanced. Exactly. Uh, we don't have a lot of room for a camera or a microphone or a laptop 
you know, that would take up another body's space. Um, so from a logistics standpoint, and then, to, and then to train all of my teachers to come in, um, sort of test the microphone, test things on, you know, uh, from a visual <laughs> standpoint, all of the technology. Um, we didn't know how to pay our teachers. I wasn't sure what would be a fair compensation for our teachers to put that extra, extra effort in. Yes. And then we, I, I attended, so this, is, this was sort of part of my decision-making process. I, when this, another gym opened uh, here, I attended on the day that they first opened and they were also attempting to do a virtual class at the same time. So they had people who were also zooming in to the class and it was extremely disconnected. Oh, okay. So I found that, you know, the teacher's attention was very divided between mm -hmm. the way they were looking into the camera or it was the laptop. There was a camera and a laptop and then sort of figuring out what was happening in the room. And so from a teaching standpoint and the quality of teaching that we were able, that I, I expected we would be able to deliver, I felt that we needed to focus just on the in-studio teachings and make it the safest, most, I don't know, authentic experience possible was just to focus on the students without the camera. Wow, okay, well this, this sounds like a big mission. Well, I think I think so, um, and I think that we've done a really I think we've done a really good job. Um, you know, making people feel that they you know that we have a safe space for them. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a lot of reluctance to, for people to come back to our studio. Mm -hmm. A because people had been working out by themselves and doing yoga in their basement for three months, so there was an there was an adaptation that happened. You know, people yes. were used to not putting on yoga pants. They were just doing it in, you know, no bras and pajama bottoms, you know, whenever they wanted. <laughs> pajama bottoms. <laughs> in the mess, whatever, you know, like the, the mess, the food, the like laundry going, whatever, you know, like it worked for them on some level. And then um, number two, it was summer. We were coming into some really nice weather in Nova Scotia and it's a really lovely place to be outside when you can. Mm -hmm. And yes. thirdly, we had people who were very nervous still of COVID-19. So they were not sure about coming into a group class again. So we had some things working against us and I wanted to take our energy and really focus on curating a beautiful, welcoming, safe environment for people to walk in our studio. And, and, uh... and Julia, at the same time, I have bought new hardware <laughs> so <laughs> we can make the choice to go online and we will this time so instead of doing the free online classes through our social media channels we will do the zoom classes via KarmaSoft and our studio if things happen again it's just mm -hmm. where we are financially now we were luckily in a financial position able to make our first choice and we're no longer in that position so we will make a different choice moving forward okay that makes sense yeah well, yeah. I'll, I think you'll figure it out. The the setup, the you know, it it, it does take some tweaking, probably, mm -hmm. right? Like the the sound, sure. the video, the white. Everything. You know, checking I, if the I'm white confident. is white. Yeah, I'm confident that we we will be able to do it. It's not something that I'm worried about because if that is our only focus, we're going to do it very well. And it's what everyone else is going to be doing. You know, if the government shuts us down again. It's what everyone else is going to be doing. Everyone else expects it now. We've been very upfront with our students that that's what's going to be happening moving forward if the government does choose to shut mm -hmm. us down. But for now, in studio feels as close to normal or you know pre-normal as as it can, which is lovely. It's a lovely, comforting feeling. It, it is amazing because that's exactly what I was talking about: sense of belonging. Yeah. And people feel differently when they're at home wearing their pajama bottoms or when they're in the studio and in interacting with people and energies and, mm. and all of this soup of energies just, and, yeah. you know, motivation, encouragement and, and feeling like normal. <laughs> yes, totally. You know, and, and, it, and it's a very different experience, uh, you know, being a student at home, you know, as well as a teacher, but, uh, you know, from speaking from a student's perspective, 
um, doing yoga at home is just so, it's just so different. You know, I, I often find myself looking at my carpet thinking, oh, I really need to vacuum it. <laughs> you know? I'm just, I'm too close to it. If I'm mad, I'm like, oh, smells in here. I have to change the garbage. You know, <laughs> there's just so many distractions. Whereas when I, when I carve out an hour to do a class in the studio, that really is, I, I have taken the time for more self-care than when yes. I'm home mm -hmm. planning to vacuum as soon as I'm done my practice, mm -hmm. you know? It, that is an hour that is truly just for me. Um, no distractions. It's a commitment, but in the end, it's worth it. Yes. And what yeah. about a sense of community that you have when you're actually in the studio? Totally. And, and that is that, I mean, that's evolved as well. You know, it was different when people came back post lockdown, people were very scared. There was sort of this fear hangover still, you know, you'd walk into our studio and you'd be looking around for somebody else. I would, I would see the students like, is there anyone else in here? Is it, is it safe to come in? Can I come in? Um, and now it's changed. It's evolved. Thankfully mm -hmm. from that place where there was so much fear, it was causing disconnection. Um, now people have just gotten used to the new normal. I'm putting that in quotes. Um, yeah. and they feel more comfortable being in spaces with other people. It just is. We also, to give you some context where we are in Nova Scotia is that we have a mask mandate. So okay. when we are in public mm -hmm. spaces, uh, we have to wear masks. So as soon as you walk into my studio, you have to, you are masked until you get to your mat and then you can take your mask off. So yes. the masks have also provided an extra sense of comfort. You know, people, we have a, we have a very large foyer um, that people really love to hang out in before and chat before class or chat after class. And it wasn't happening when we first opened at mm -hmm. all. And, and, and we, were, we weren't encouraging that either. Um, but now since people have the masks on, everybody is masks and, and, and everybody is talking and chatting and laughing again. And um, it just, it feels a little bit more pre-pandemic, which is lovely. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Excellent. Yeah. G gr well done. I mean, I'm just, I'm excited for your studio <laughs> on the oh. mat. <laughs> <laughs> on the mat, yay. So for me, the way I, I did uh, some online classes, I would just try to kind, I was, I tried to fake a yoga studio physical location in my home for example i would clean up the the area like so it's when you come to a yoga studio it's not messy there right so it's usually no. but but yes. sometimes at home i have like a sweater here and maybe some socks over here so yes. I, I i would clean everything up i put um yoga outfit maybe some leggings like so that i get the feel okay i gotta commit for half an hour or an hour of uh, doing yoga so yeah. for me i feel like i i pretend that i'm in a yoga studio yes but, but for me it takes a bit of an effort because otherwise i'm like lazy and i, and I just put things off oh maybe i'll do it tomorrow and <laughs> totally i also find doing yoga at home an hour is so long like yes, a, a, it's, a, true. Oh it's God, true. It's incredibly long. And I love yoga. I love yoga enough to own a yoga studio, but it is so long. Whereas if I'm in a class, an hour sometimes just flies by. But at home, not so much. It's 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 really that collective energy sort of yes. we, mm -hmm. we get caught on this wave and we're all sort of moving with the tide, you know, sort of through the class. And it's it's a yes. really um, amazing thing to be a part of. I have to confess, ever since the beginning of pandemic, I haven't done a single one hour yoga class indoor, like online. Well, I yeah. went, we had some yoga classes in the park and I think mm -hmm. it was an hour long. I, I can't remember because I, you know, outside you don't look at the watch and you don't look at the time. You just kind of get in the flow. So yeah. I think that was an hour long, but at home, I usually do half an hour, 45 minutes because it, it does seem longer when you're by yourself with, with I don't a know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I just think it has to be that collective energy. It has to, because time exists the same in my basement and in the studio, but it just has to be the people. Exactly. Yes. The, yeah. Our perception of time shifts once we are in this collective soup. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yes. And how, what's, uh, what's the capacity of your uh, yoga room? 
Okay, so get this. Our, we've got two yoga uh, rooms at On The Mat. We actually finished one okay. during lockdown. Okay, so we were building a smaller studio Mm -hmm. on to mm -hmm. on the mat and it was finished during the pandemic <laughs> so we can't even use it now because it's a little too small we can only fit about probably six people in there physically distanced so we actually have been doing um some small group classes in there but for private groups um who who don't private groups we i don't know if you guys do you guys have bubbles in um in bc do you know what i say when i mean a, like a bubble um I'm not sure. What do you mean by okay, that? Okay, it's okay. So we in, in Nova Scotia, um, as we were sort of planning to come out of full lockdown, okay. uh, one of the measures that we put in place was that we could bubble with another family. So this was, with, oh. was, this was in April. We could bubble with another family. So we could socialize, but only with one other family. So that was your bubble, okay? Mm -hmm. And then the second measure after that was you could bubble with 10 people. Okay, okay, so you could have a bubble of 10 people. That was your group, but you couldn't bubble with anybody else. Okay. So we've sort of like been increasing the size of our bubbles. Now it's a little bit different, but so what we've said in the small studio, because we aren't doing public classes there, but if, if you have a bubble and you are comfortable coming in with that bubble, then we will do a class for your bubble in that studio because we can't physically distance in that studio and have, and have, you know, 12 or 15 people in there. However, in our large studio, when we have max capacity and we do probably a dozen times a year on days, like um, on Christmas Eve, on New Year's Eve, days that we would only have one class a year at the studio, we can fit 50 people in. Right now, physically distanced, we can fit 16 in plus the teacher. Oh, wow. What a, that's a big change. <laughs> it's a big change. It's a big financial change. So, I mean, and, and like I said, you know, like it's only about a dozen times a year that we would have classes of 50. Uh, a regular class for us would be between 20 and 30. Um, but it's still a very big change for, to 16. And because it's not just the change of the capacity, it's, it's asking people to sign up now for classes. They never yes. had to before. They could just show up. Mm -hmm. You know, they could just show up and we also lent them mats for free. We had 60 blocks, you know, we had 60 straps, we had 60 foamies, 60 bolsters. So they could just show up. We had basically everything there for them except their yoga gear. Actually, we did have a couple extra sports bras at the studio <laughs> for people to <laughs> get. <laughs> it seemed to be something that people would forget. We, so people could just borrow everything. We wanted to make it super easy to do yoga. And now there are so many barriers in sort of in place to doing yoga because people really have to carve out that time and commit. Um, and it's tough. You know, people have busy lives. Um, or, and some people are just not in the habit of carving out that time. It's really tough. So now they have to pre-book to get a spot, to yes. secure your spot in class. And we also have a cancellation policy, which we've never had in place before. Um, and so we have to charge people if they don't come, which has been really difficult for me. And it's been really difficult for them to accept because it's just so different than what we were doing before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. It, it, it's very different, but I guess it's better than nothing, right? It's better than, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, w what, so some people cannot make it to your, in um, physical location. So do you think they're just doing yoga at home? Do you know what they're doing? Like, have you heard anything from those people who are the rest of the people who don't come? Yeah, the rest of the people that don't come, they are doing yoga at home. I mean, we still offer, we're at about 35 classes a week now at the okay. studio. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, there's a wide variety to choose from. If you can make it, there is a class for you. It just requires a bit of pre-planning. Now, the people that, now there are some people who are immunocompromised. Okay. Um, uh -huh. Or, or they're dealing with, uh, you know, some anxiety issues and, and they, just, they just can't come back right now uh, or they've made the choice to not come back. Um, and I'm not sure what they're doing because we, we heard from them initially because everybody, you know, I was swarmed by emails of people wanting to put their memberships on hold or cancel their memberships. Um, but they said that they would be back and I trusted them. Now, what they're doing is 
I don't know what they're doing. I don't know. There's a lot of free yoga online, as I'm sure that you found out during the lockdown. There's a lot of yoga yes, online. A There's lot. a lot of free content. Um, so I don't know what they're doing. You know, we're still, we're still, even though we are in technically in fall, it's still really beautiful here. I hope they're outside. I hope they are moving. I hope they're getting more comfortable with what's happening in the world. I hope that we'll see them again. Um, yes, I hope that's so That's my too. hope. That's my hope. I, I, I hope so too. But 35 classes a week, that's quite a bit. What do you teach? What kind of yoga? I teach, my classes are, are uh, power flow. So power I teach, flow. yes, I teach power flows. Uh, the studio, I currently have two classes on the schedule and I'm adding another, th another one in, uh, which was on our pre-pandemic schedule this coming week. So we are slowly adding classes back in as the demand increases. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so I'll do three, but I do, so I do other classes too. I teach, um, I work with some teams and I teach some private groups um, and some corporate groups as well. Uh, but you know, what's happened during this, the pandemic is that, you know, I went from teaching all the time to not teaching any of the time. And I went from working all the time, you know, on the admin side of the business, because that's like a huge part of the business to not doing anything. Um, and it's really allowed me to sort of focus on getting this ratio, right. Of the, the amount of classes that I'm teaching. So sort of the amount of, of time I'm dedicating to growing the business behind the scenes. And I think I've actually reached a really good balance. So I'm not sure how many more classes I'm going to be adding to my schedule in terms of teaching public classes or teaching live classes, um, because it's enabled me to find a little bit more breathing room in terms of the admin side, because there's a lot of admin when you own and run a studio. I have got about, oh, I don't know how many teachers I have now, 16, maybe. Wow. Yeah. Sounds like a lot of work. See, that, that was a blessing in disguise right there. It was. See, <laughs> it's one of those blessings that we're looking for so hard during this time. Exactly. But yes. It was, it was one. Yeah. I was actually, I had, I had a meeting this morning in person, which was lovely. Um, and, and we were chatting about that uh, because she was telling me about how she might have to go back to the office full time next week. And she's just really adapted to working from home which I feel like that's happened to so many people. And I was sharing my experience of just like sort of working with this ratio of public classes to admin and, and how I've sort of found that sweet spot too. So yeah, blessings in disguise. Exciting. Great. Mm -hmm. Well done again. It's, I, I'm, I'm excited about all the changes that are happening. Uh, do you, do you have any kind of, tips or any suggestions for yoga studios that are transitioning from online to in studio to a physical location classes or ver like verse? Yeah, I, I would, uh, <laughs> it's all about taking your yoga practice and putting into practice in different aspects of your life because it will require a lot of patience and um, because you're going to get a lot of feedback. You know, when we first reopened, um, we had a lot of feedback, you know, people had a lot of concerns, genuine concerns with, you know, the placement of the mats and the placement of the hand sanitizer. And have you, have you thought about this and you didn't say this and you said this last time, but you didn't say it this time. So there was a lot of learnings. Um, and it, it was overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And it was really important to take the time and to listen and figure out how it, it could apply to what we were doing in the studio and benefit the students. So number one, be patient. And number two, listen um, to what everybody's telling you, regardless of if it's what you were doing before, regardless of whether or not you think this is the right way to do it, there are going to be people with very genuine concerns and the feedback is going to be really important for you to take into consideration. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, my, my last question for you is what's your, um, ma ma what's your mantra today? Today? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> As opposed to like yesterday or the day before my mantra for today. Well, maybe it's the same. I don't know. 
I don't know either. I don't, and I, you know what? I don't know if I'm somebody who gets up. I, I know, I know that I'm not somebody who gets up in the morning and creates an intention for the day. That's, uh-huh. that's just, it's not who I am. It's totally who my husband is. He does that every day. He gets up, he meditates, he creates an intention for the day. He writes them down. Wow. Um, I know, right? That's like hardcore intention it is setting. hardcore does not work in my life. <laughs> they seem to be more organic as they come up. They really Can you do. borrow some from him? <laughs> well, you know what? Today, it sort of came to me. I, I had a meeting at nine um, with a, a teacher that I'm going to be bringing on. And we're going to, she's a younger teacher. So we're going to be doing some work with her and she's going to be subbing. She's got a lot of potential. Um, and I was, as, uh, and I have the sniffles. Okay. So in the time of COVID, it's like the, as a teacher who teaches public classes, what you don't want is a stuffy nose. Okay. Definitely and I knew not. it was coming on Thursday morning. I was like, Oh, my voice is so scratchy. And I was like, it's sort of sexy, but it's not, it's impractical, <laughs> totally impractical. Cause my daughter had a cold this week. So we had to keep her home from school. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and now I, I have it. And I was, I, I was going to run to my meeting. And I was like, you know what? I really just need to take care of myself today. I just do. So I'm going to walk. It's a beautiful day. I'm going to take the time. I'm going to walk to my meeting. I'm going to walk home. I'm going to do some gentle yoga this afternoon. And I'm just going to take care of myself. And I'm going to be really, really kind to myself today. I'm going to be kind to my body. This is exactly what I need. I'm listening today. So it was organic. I didn't set that intention. It just came up. It was what I needed. And I think I'm just doing a better job of listening. And I don't know if it's because of the pandemic and because of COVID. I don't know if it's because it's a function of aging um, and sort of the evolution of where I am in my life. Uh, But I think I'm just doing a better job of listening to what I need on a daily basis Mm -hmm. and then feeding that. Excellent. No, take care of yourself is a beautiful mantra so i mm. think it's it's just brilliant so i love how you said it and i and i like how you guys have a different style of approaching uh, intentions and mantras and meditations in your family like some people just have it kind of spontaneous and then some people are very meticulous and organized right yeah so i feel like i'm more like you i'm not i'm not really disciplined some things I am, but not not this part. But take care of yourself is a beautiful thing to remind ourselves anytime. Yes, yes. and it, <laughs> anytime. it's like a, it over and over and over and over. It's just one of those things. Yes. Yeah. And I, and I was just thinking after after you said that some people were doing um, yoga in their pajama bottoms. I was just wondering how would it look if you actually do like a one fun class when people can come to a yoga studio and wear their pajama bottoms. <laughs> well, you know what, <laughs> Julia? Lots of people do. <laughs> we have oh, a class. what? They are doing we it? And we have a class on Sunday night. It's at, it's at five o'clock and it's called Mind Body Bliss. Okay. And it's a, it's a start out with a little bit of yin and then they move into restorative and then they move into a yoga nidra. And people come with, well, you know, now we, we don't have props at the studio anymore that we can share. Uh-huh. So people show up with pillows from their bed. They show up with quilts. They show uh-huh. up in like, it, it, you've never seen anything like this. It's like they're going to a slumber party. So it is. Sounds it like is. A party. <laughs> it's like a slumber party. And people have said to me many times, you know, you should just let people stay the night because after this class, it's all I want to do. I just want to get cozy and go to sleep and spend the night. So I feel like the pajama thing is already happening. Whether or not we'll allow people to stay the night, that's a different, we'll cross that bridge. Maybe someday we'll have a yoga sleepover, but I, I feel like it's already happening. We've, we've allowed that space to people to come in their jammies. Well, that sounds like a lot of fun. Again, community, right? You feel so comfortable with each other. Yeah. You, you mm-hmm. just, you wear whatever you want. You have the pillows handy. Yeah. Yeah. Take a little nap during during your class. Oh yeah, lots of snoring, lots of snoring in that class. <laughs> wow, I I didn't know it actually is possible. Wow, what a surprise! Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and do people smile? Like I usually, when somebody's snoring beside you, it kind of you know you you start smiling 
instinctively. Oh, totally, totally. Or it, or it wakes you up. <laughs> like their yes, storm wakes you it wakes up. you up. That's true. <laughs> yeah, the, our teachers who teach it, they they wear sock feet, so they're they, you know like the the bare feet. There makes a, it makes a noise on the on the floor. They wear socks feet as not to disturb the people who are sleeping quietly, but they always do give a little nudge, like a little nudge to people who are snoring uh -huh, uh -huh. because they probably don't want to be snoring, you know? Probably. Most Sometimes likely. it happens, but it's not a, not a, you know, people don't do it on purpose. Yeah. Great. Okay. Well, th this, um, this feels like a good moment to wrap up talking about snoring people <laughs> <laughs> and a little nudge. Yeah. Wake up. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Tori, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom. You're such a great speaker and I, I feel so much inspiration and it's been a wonderful talk. Oh, Julia, that's so nice. This was fun. You said we couldn't talk a long time, but I feel like we did. Exactly. See, yeah. again, perception okay. of time, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We only talked for maybe 35 minutes, but it feels like an hour. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's because we're in our basement and you're in your room. If we were in a yoga studio, it'd be like that. Exactly. Yes, <laughs> yes, I agree with you. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Time would just fly. But no, we, I think we did great. And uh, thank you, everybody, for watching this episode. Tune in for more episodes. We have them on YouTube, on our Facebook page. And until next time, goodbye.